I want to welcome everyone to the 11th Annual State of Our City Address here in Centennial and introduce myself. My name is Jennifer Bryce and I work with CBS4 as a reporter. We get asked to do a tremendous amount of events and I try to pick things that are very near and dear to my heart and Centennial is absolutely near and dear to my heart for many reasons but because this is my hometown. We moved here when I was eight years old. My mom and dad still live in the same house in Homestead Farm 2 off Dry Creek and Holly. Yeah, Homestead Farm 2, it's a good neighborhood. <laughs> Everyone wants to get into that neighborhood now, it's so funny. Um, my son is now a product of Littleton Public Schools. He goes to the same elementary school that I went to, which is Franklin, and will be going to the same high school that I went to, too. So it's really cool to now be at this point in my career where my family gets to grow up in the community that I was raised in and gets to enjoy the amazing benefits of such a wonderful community. So needless to say, when I was asked to come and moderate this event, it was a no-brainer, hands down for me, because I'm a huge fan of the community. And on that note, I'm going to say a couple things about the mayor today. She's going to talk about some really exciting things that the city has on the horizon, talk about the milestones of this year. But most of you know that Mayor Noon was elected in 2009. She got re-elected in 2013 for another four years. So applause to that, please. She is very, very well known for her dedication to the city. You can see her bouncing around to many different events from ribbon cuttings to school ceremonies to policy making events, all kinds of things like that. And I think if you want a mayor to represent your city, you want someone who's invested in the city. Her and her husband, Jim, have had a very successful business for the last 29 years, a packaging and boxing company. They have another company that's on the horizon I learned about today at lunch, and she's just a great steward of our community. So with that being said, I would like to introduce Mayor Kathy Noon. Come on up here and give her a round of applause. You can take it with your like being a mic. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. And thanks so much to Jennifer. She's um, done this for us twice now. And it really does mean a lot when our MC has a connection with the city. And I'm really excited to hear that her son's at Franklin Elementary because that principal of the school was actually a fourth grade teacher at my children's school um, when they were growing up in Aurora, and he's moved to Franklin, and I still keep in touch with him. So you're in good hands at Franklin Elementary. And that man that woohooed, that's one of our council members. So he's very excited that you live in Homestead. So all is good. All right, well, let's get started. I'd like to say good afternoon and welcome to our 11th annual city, um, State of the City. It's my sixth year, so I guess I've now been here more than half the time. So thank you for coming back each and every year. It's so good to see so many familiar faces. As always, it's a pleasure with you, to be with you while we celebrate Centennial's exciting accomplishments and to tell you what might be coming up in this next year. But before we get started, we have to do some obligatory recognitions for some people that are joining us here today, and I'm very honored to have them here. Um, you can just give us a quick stand up or a wave if I call you out, and maybe we can um, do some, some applause at the end. I know you want to get back to work at some point. Anyway, many, many thanks to our Rotary Club president, Mark Garfinkel, and the entire Rotary Club for everything they've done today, especially Dee Sagers. So thank you, Rotarians, and Dee and Mark, we appreciate it. We always have to say what a great job the Embassy Suites does hosting us here. Um, this is a big event for them to, to have all of us in here, and if we could fit any more people in, I think we would, but they have always had great food and, and are just wonderful hosts, so thank you. Um, there's a few mayors out here I'd like to recognize, guys that I get to spend a lot of time with, other than my husband. I have Lone Tree Mayor Jim Gunning. I have Greenwood Village Mayor Ron Rakowski. Mayor Hogan was to be with us today, but he had something come up, so we, we are sorry that we're missing the Aurora mayor. Um, we have our lovely Arapahoe County commissioners with us. We have all the Nancys, Nancy Doty, Nancy Sharp, Nancy Jackson, Rob Balkenfeld, and Bill Holan. We have our uh, county clerk and recorder, Matt Crane, and certainly, not last but not least, our Arapahoe County recorder, Kelly Lear Call. So thank you all for coming out and joining us today. 
Representing our armed forces, I have Colonel Sean uh, McElhaney Pajeo, who's been at my table and learning a lot about um, where he was before, and now he's out there at Buckley, so it's great to have them with us, and we certainly enjoy having the Air uh, Reserve Personnel Center out at Buckley, but then having the Air, um, the Air Guard in our city. They couldn't join us today. We want to thank our three fire districts. We have Chief, uh, Fire Chief from Cunningham, Jerry Rhodes. We have South Metro Fire Chief Bob Baker and Littleton Fire Chief Chris Armstrong. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate having you here. We have the leadership from our two school districts, Littleton and Cherry Creek. We appreciate the care that you give all of our young children. You do a wonderful job and help make our community a place that people want to, to live and work. Uh, certainly want to thank the members of the special districts that serve our city. We have South Suburban Parks and Rec, Semswell, Water and Sanitation Districts, the Arapaho Library District. We could not be the stellar community that we are if it weren't for all the work that you do, because your constituents are our constituents, and we really do appreciate your partnership. So great job to all of our special district folks. certainly want to thank the Arapahoe County Sheriff's Department. Our sheriff's not with us here today. You know, Hilton Head or State of the City? I don't know which one I would have picked, but we welcome everyone at the sheriff's table, and I know we're represented well, so thanks for all that you gentlemen do for us. And ladies, I think we have a few ladies with us. Closer to home, we have our wonderful City of Centennial City Council, people that I get to work with every day, every week. They do a great job, and I want to introduce them for sure. From District 1, we have Council Member Kathy Turley and Vori Moon. From District 2, <laughs> Council Member Keith Gardner and Council Member Doris Trular. <laughs> district 3, my district, so be careful, gentlemen. We have Council Member and Mayor Pro Tem Ken Lucas and Council Member Mark Gatto. <laughs> and not to be left out, District 4, we have Council Member Stephanie Pico and Mr. C.J. Whalen. <laughs> Rounding out our leadership at the city, we have our wonderful city manager, John Danielson, and our terrific city uh, attorney, Mr. Bob Widener. Thank you all so much. <laughs> Last but not least, I certainly want to recognize all the spouses who support all of our leaders, uh, especially mine, Jim. I appreciate all that you do for me, but I know how many of all of you have your spouse's support that help you do the great job that you do. So thanks to the spouses that are here today, and if they're not, take it home and say, I really do appreciate the time they let you spend with us. I'd also like to recognize our contract. Yes, yes for the spouses. Let's, yay. I'm also gonna recognize our contractors who provide this stellar service that we have in our city. Certainly CH2M, no hill, I'm gonna trip over that as we all are today. They have a new name and a new logo. They keep our streets in good shape, mowing, taking care of our park, our code compliance. They do so much for our city, and their partnership is, just makes us look fabulous. Safeville, our building services folks, they have issued more building permits each quarter of last year than ever before in the city's history, and done it with keeping their high level of customer satisfaction. So that really makes us look good in the development community and to our residents, many of whom had to get new roofs this year. So if, if you've gotten a new roof, you've been through that department. Um, certainly our Humane Society, the Pikes Peak, they are our animal services provider. And what was unique about them in 2014 is they had a save rate of 99%, meaning of all the animals that were picked up, 99% of them were either returned to their owner or they found homes for those animals. So that's something to be very proud of in the city of Centennial. We like to take care of our animals, so thank you. And of course, public safety. We could not be the safest city in, you know, of over 75,000 that we are if it weren't for the work of our Arapahoe County Sheriff. And this year, we were excited that we added, we added new uh, school resource officers, two new canine units, and expanded the uh, internet crimes. You hate to think that you have to expand your sheriff's department, but being proactive helps keep us as the safest city that we are, and we love that. So our three fire districts certainly don't disappoint us either, and thanks to everything they do to keep our, our community safe from fire, especially when we're heading into wildlife, wildlife, wildfire season. Anyway, all of us work together here at the city to make a very highly performing team. And so we're so excited to have you come today. And while we value this opportunity to get together, many of you know that I'm a bit more comfortable speaking in a less formal setting. 
And I finally have found the rationale that I was looking for. Author Michael J. Gelb stated, over-seriousness is a warning sign for mediocrity and bureaucratic thinking. People who are seriously committed to mastery and high performance are secure enough to lighten up. <laughs> That's, yes, you're supposed to laugh, lighten up. So our theme this year is great performances. As I look back on 2014, I just want to say what, it was a year of many, many great performances. From the spectacular community events at the Centennial Center Amphitheater Park, to ribbon cuttings and groundbreakings of wonderful local businesses, to the city and our park receiving national recognitions. This was a year that we got to celebrate all the hard work come together and give us this year of great performances. We had some pretty amazing events this year. The summer kickoff event started with fireworks and live music. There were movie nights, the um, farmers and artisan markets that we had this year, and certainly our annual Centennial Under the Stars, which included a light show, which is not an easy thing to do when you're as near to the airport as we are. But the FAA let us do that. That was great. And we ended up the year with our annual holiday tree lighting, where our young uh, carolers from our, our elementary schools sing us into the holidays. It's a great season, a great year. Organizations throughout the metro area also were visiting our park and decided to hold their own events there. We had NAMI, the Arapaho Library District had a concert, Smash Fest with Brett Michaels, and many, many more. I think we can all agree we have a unique park and certainly a great venue to hold great performances. And we want to thank what makes this all possible, the funding that we get from the Arapaho County open space tax dollars and the uh, lottery money that the, uh, uh, supports the Conservation Trust Fund. Thanks to you all, we literally had great performance at Centennial Center Park in 2014. So thank you all so much. Who doesn't know about the 5280 Top of the Town? We all see that magazine come out, and pretty exciting when you make that list. It's quite an achievement. Well, last year, Little Centennial in the Burbs actually made the list for the behemoth playground at Centennial Center Park. It was in the top of the town issue. It was quite a, an accomplishment for us, and you don't ever know about it. It just shows up, and you're not contacted ahead of time. And what happened this last month is we were also noted for the partnership that we did with the Littleton Public Schools for um, a playground. And they were recognized at Peabody Elementary for the coolest playground feature, the Berliner rope climbing structure. So if you live in the area of Peabody Elementary, you might want to check that out with your kids or grandkids. Not only did 5280 take notice, but we were also recognized nationally by one of the best places to live. We were number 13 in Money Magazine's list, up from 47th just two years ago, and USA Today ranked Centennial as number 26. Locally and nationally, others are acknowledging what we've known here in Centennial all along. So a picture's worth a thousand words, and we'd like to give you a little review of 2014. So take a look.
I hope you all saw, just got a, a feel for some of the things that we did last year and certainly some of the partnerships, a number of those things involved our special districts and our, our, our contractors and our providers and all of you, so it was a great year. Of course, I want to talk about other things than just what the city's doing. So our local economy has been performing very well. Homes are selling quickly and at high record pricing. Um, we have high building permits, which is showing a real, um, a real increase in our, our reconstructions and our um, remodeling. So that's exciting for those that are already here. The city remains debt free, continues to have an increase in our sales tax revenue. Uh, maintains a high credit rating and prides itself on doing economic development just a little differently. We seem to attract and achieve the unique and different, things like IKEA, United Launch, Seeker, Allosource, and Topgolf. Our economic development strategy is to recruit, retain, and assist centennial businesses to develop and grow. Since Colorado is now one of the top states for building, for, I'm sorry, for business climate and job growth, Centennial strives to be innovative in providing economic development services. Last year, we decided that we were going to incorporate our contract modeling into traditional economic development services. We will utilize some of the best economic development talent, and our goal is to continue to provide strong and positive foundations for our business community. We'd like to let you hear from some of our businesses that are unique and have been in Centennial for a while, so enjoy this video as well. So we uh, process human tissue for transplantation. So if you have that heart on your driver's license here in Colorado, we're the folks who get the tissue donation. So we process bone, skin, stem cells that we all get from people who are, who are kind enough to donate at the time of their death, and we can turn that into transplantable tissue for orthopedic surgeons. Yeah, so we've been here since 2000. So you know, going on 15 years, we moved into the current facility in uh, September of 2000 and did a big major expansion here in Centennial, uh, more just about doubled the size of our, our facility here in Centennial in 2012. There are three uh, big things that we love about being here in Centennial. The first is the location. We're, we can get to downtown easily, we can get to the airport easily. Transportation is crucial for us because we have tissue coming in from all over the, the country and, and the road system here in Centennial is perfect for where we're at. The city of Centennial is great because the people we've worked with as we've gone through our expansion have been phenomenal to work with. Very cooperative, very understanding, very timely, able to get us what we need to do to continue our growth. And frankly, the services around us, the, the restaurants, the hotels, the uh, conference centers, all those things we need to have uh, to run a business are crucial. And then frankly, a lot of our employees live in Centennial and they enjoy living in Centennial and that makes it an added bonus to live in a good community where you can live and work in the same place. Well, there's only four or five of our type of business in the country, and we're the largest one west of the Mississippi. All the other ones are on the East Coast. Um, and frankly, what we do is really unique because we deal with somebody's loved one who passed on, and we try to, to, to make it a worthwhile uh, product, or you know, it's called an allograph so that the doctors can use it. Um, so we, what we really do is sacred. We, we take it as our sacred mission to do the right thing, and, and being able to do it in a community that supports us as we're doing it understands it. We've had the city uh, meet over here. We've had the city council meet over here. I've been to city council meetings. Having the city involved with what we do is, has helped our growth as we've gotten bigger. I would describe Centennial as being incredibly collaborative. Uh, we have a completely open relationship with uh, all of the departments. We were trying to think through. We've worked probably with every department, including law enforcement. Uh, uh, we had the Sheriff's Department, which isn't Centennial, but it's contracted through Centennial, use our facility last year as a SWAT training ground. And so they went into our office space. So we've worked with, from law enforcement to obviously the, the building inspectors, the fire department's been absolutely spectacular. So all the services we've had have been very open and transparent with us as we've tried to do the amazing things that we do here. Our business is a family chiropractic practice located in the heart of Centennial and we do wonderful chiropractic work in our office helping people get well and stay well and feel great. Our doc's a chiropractic neurologist so he's fantastic. Something else that really makes us unique is our um, outstanding support for our corporate partners to support their wellness programs and also their employee retention through little things like um, 
massage over the lunch break or lunch and learns. Um, it's really important to us that we're supporting our community. We love our location in Centennial. One of the things that's amazing about being in the heart of Centennial is that we're right on Arapahoe Road. So now when we say you know, we're with Lovett Family Chiropractic, people will say, I know exactly where you're at. Um, and that, is very, that was a big change for us because we were in a medical office building and if you were standing next to our office, you wouldn't have known where we were before we moved to Centennial. So the exposure that Centennial allowed us to have in, in our complex was really amazing. Um, and then I love being in a good combination of residential area and business area. So we really get that community feel being in Centennial by being right in the heart. We actually, when we opened our practice in 2011, wrote the city a thank you note because it was so easy to do our build out and so easy to work with the city to make sure that we were in compliance and to be able to do what we needed to do to make our business feel like our, our home. To think to write a thank you note to the city, they must have been really nice to work with. And that's been our um, experience along the way. We love being a part of all the City of Centennial events that happen at Centennial Park. And so all the way along, this has felt like a home for our business. I would say our pride about being located in Centennial is every time somebody asks me, where's your practice located? And I get to say, we are in the heart of Centennial, right across the street from Centennial, our airport, right next to my favorite muffin, a couple streets down from the Centennial Center Park um, and the Cent uh, Centennial City Building. I feel a lot of pride every time I get to say that that's where we're located because people want to be here. People want to do business here. People want to live here. And when I get to say we're in the heart of Centennial, it makes me really proud every time. Seeker Engineering is a design and manufacturing company for satellite hardware. We've got a couple of great customers here in Colorado, Lockheed Martin, Ball Aerospace. If you've seen your house from space, we build the data management system and the spacecraft processor that control the digital globe spacecraft that takes those photos. We actually relocated from Los Angeles to unincorporated Arapahoe County in 1995. And so we've been part of the city as long as there's been a city. Uh, we won a large contract with Lockheed Martin, at the time Martin Marietta out in Waterton Canyon. And when we won the program, we said we would move to the Front Range somewhere. So we looked at Colorado Springs, we looked at Boulder, we looked here in uh, the Centennial area, and, and we liked this the best. Well, my dad and brother started it. We're a family business. Uh, Seeker stands for Scott, Eric, Anderson, Kurt Ray. And my father is 86 and still comes to work every day. Well, being a family-owned business in aerospace is not unique, but it's not common. Um, and I would say that's probably our biggest trait is being privately held, doing extremely technical, um, exciting work, and being a family-held business. First off, I like being located in Colorado. Um, it was a great move for us, uh, financially able to hire people, um, lifestyle. But Centennial makes it really easy for us to hire people. The infrastructure the city's put in place uh, is wonderful. It's always being upgraded. We bring in people from all over um, the country to, for our job openings. And it's very easy when they come here and see what we have to offer. Um, we first moved here back in 95. Uh, it was unincorporated and we bought a building. But since that time, we've moved into three other buildings, two that we have built and retrofitted. And we've worked with the city pretty closely over those years to do those permit processes and get the buildings built, and uh, it's been a great relationship. Centennial's been great for us to grow in. Um, you know, the, uh, we, when we moved here with 20 people, we're now 470 people. Colorado has just been great for us. Uh, we could not have built the company we have without being here. We like it a lot. Oh, I hope you'll uh, help me <clears throat> thank those folks. A number of them are in the audience today, so if you see someone familiar and famous, you might want to get their autograph since they now in, are in film forever. So um, I'd also like to be, um, I'd, I'd like to make sure I, I recognize those businesses that opened or broke ground last year in the city. View House um, opened a much fanfare, and that's in the old Trail Bus Steakhouse building. 
and it's become extremely, extremely popular. The hotspot has a very unique feature. One of the largest, if not the largest, television screens in, this, in the area. It's 200 square inches, and you can actually see it as you're driving down I-25. So be careful, it's another new form of distracted driving. So be careful with that large TV screen. Of course, that makes it an easy place to watch sporting events, and it's also got a great view. So we're welcoming them to our city. Um, we also have the Colorado's first Top Golf, which broke ground earlier in the year, and you saw some pictures of that. It's at, Centen it's at um, Havana Street and Easter, and there was an article recently in Forbes magazine about Top Golf saying how they have created a new form of entertainment by transforming the driving range of decades past with a live entertainment venue. The model's obviously working. They're opening 10 new facilities around the, the world in 2015, and Centennial's very fortunate to have one of those. If you haven't visited a Top Golf, definitely look them up online and be ready to, to visit ours when it opens later this summer. Of course, the Jones District moved forward on the city's first transit-oriented development, which is just north of Ikea on the west side of I-25. Visionary Glenn Jones is developing 42 acres of land into a 1.8 million square feet mixed-use Class A space. It will include commercial, retail, and some residential. Businesses are partnering with us to do some um, expanded access to the light rail station that's in that area so that we can benefit all the commuters. So we really want to thank the Jones District, the Denver South Transportation Management Association, and Panorama Metro District for their contributions to make this happen in the next year or so. So thanks so much to you all. We also want to welcome Fortune 500 company Aero Electronics to Centennial. Aero relocated its headquarters at I-25 in Dry Creek at the end of last year, and it brought 500 employees to the city of Centennial. Aero is definitely known for innovative technologies, and we think they're going to fit right in, as you'll hear a little bit more later in this, in this speech. Also since, 2014, since January 2014, the city has processed four annexations, totaling more than 170 acres. Three of these annexations are in the area of I-25 and Dry Creek Boulevard, and Dry Creek Road. The Dry Creek Corporate Center, which is a mixed-use commercial center, the Signature at Dry Creek, which is near Maggiano's, and the Panorama Park, which was recently purchased by Global Miller. Our fourth annexation is on the east side of town, near the Centennial Medical Plaza, and that's the Centennial East Corporate Center. Altogether, these annexations have brought in more than 850,000 square feet of commercial space to our city and presented an opportunity for many, many more development projects. Plans are all under review right now for a multi-story commercial building in the Panorama Park area, and Performance Cycle is well underway at I-25 and Dry Creek. Their new building will feature what is uh, the largest motorcycle parts, accessories, and apparel store in the state of Colorado. So both of these projects are, re are a direct result of the recent annexations into the city and affirm our business-friendly efforts. Welcome to Centennial, all of you. And while attracting new businesses is always exciting, it's also very important that we retain and help those businesses who already call Centennial home. Our city was the first community in the area to raise the business personal property tax exemption to $100,000 for the city's portion of that tax. Approximately 96% of our 4,000 Centennial businesses will not owe any Centennial business property tax. We strive to make doing business in Centennial easier. Those claps are for the people that personally have to fill that form out. And, and so if it's inside baseball, but it's important for economic growth. Also in 2014, we began the final implementation for the, for the final phase of our new land development code. We updated the zoning of over 1,700 commercial properties. We had already done our residential, we'd already done our schools and parks, and we needed to complete this project with all of those commercial properties. The primary purpose of that new land development code was to protect the character of our existing residential neighborhoods, but also provide a consistent and streamlined development process. We want our residential and commercial property owners to be able to improve their properties without unnecessary, expensive, and time-consuming red tape. So with the new code, commercial development is done in a compatible method without the need to negotiate on an individual case-by-case -case basis for every development standard or improvement that you do. Predictable timelines and outcomes. 
you know what's expected going in, and it, that the process has been so appreciated that that's one of the reasons for all of those annexations. So great job, everyone, to get that, that project completed. We certainly can't talk about businesses with, without business without talking about the importance of our roadways in order to get people to those businesses. Keeping our streets maintained in good condition is certainly a top priority for City of Centennial Council members, and all seasons especially. And a few years ago, I talked about we had done a snowplow route optimization, which shaved about 30% off the time it took us to do our streets. Well, our residents expressed the desire for even better snow plowing. So last year, we purchased five additional snowplow units so that we could enhance those efforts. The crews are able to get through the city, through all the routes quicker, and be able to get people to their businesses and out of their residential areas safer. We also purchased a unique piece of ice cutting equipment for some of the problem areas that we consistently have. And that, uh, that item is called an Arctic Shark. So if you ever see a very odd looking equipment out in the dead of winter, that's what that piece of equipment is. So Centennial Council members have really strived to be responsive to our citizens this year. So great job, everybody. And of course, regional transportation remains a high priority within the city as well. The design and right-of-way acquisition for the critical road widening project on Arapahoe Road between Waco Street and Himalaya Way is nearly complete. Construction is starting shortly and will probably take about a year to complete, but when, the, when it's done, this project is going to greatly improve the safety and mobility along that corridor. Anyone that drives that every day is just chomping at the bit for us to be able to get started. So we want to thank our partners of Arapahoe County, the City of Aurora, and Semswa for helping get this regional improvement underway. We couldn't do it without you, so thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. We also continue to partner with CDOT, Arapahoe County, and the City of Greenwood Village, and the Southeast Public Improvement Metropolitan District on the improvements to the I-25 and Arapahoe Road interchange. <clears throat> the next phase is about, I mean, the design is over about 30% complete, and major utility relocation and resident outreach concerning uh, sound walls is what's currently the focus. Construction is still about a year away, and this project will be targeted for the end of 2017 as a completion. So a lot more going to be happening on Arapahoe Road. I'm also happy to report there's great progress on the C-470 road widening project. Uh, CDOT has chosen a design build told express lane option to help reduce the peak gridlock that we have, the peak hour gridlock. And they're working right now closely with the government agencies and the residents along that thoroughfare so that we get the optimal and successful outcome that we all desire. So we want to thank Douglas County and Lone Tree for their leadership on this project. And hopefully that's going to be another good, another good project for safety and mobility. You'll notice that partnerships, innovation, and public outreach are key to transportation performance. And when complete, the grand finale of all of these regional transportation projects will be improved safety and mobility, not only for Centennial, but for the entire region. With so much going on in the city, it's important for us to keep our community informed in a variety of, we of ways. For years, I mentioned social media, and finally, at this event last year, announced that we were um, doing Facebook and Twitter, and we, we got our social media launched. Well, this year, we, we further uh, expanded that with uh, letting our communities, our neighborhoods, can find out about events through Nextdoor. And the city is on Twitter, and now your very own mayor is on Twitter. So it's at Mayor Noon. I'm a, I'm a novice, so be, be gentle. And you can join us in today's conversation by using the official hashtag, uh, State of Centennial. So you can all pull your phones out now and, and take a look. And that's your permission. How's that? So social media is certainly constantly improve, in, increasing in both users and the platform. So it's important that we stay current. And we're going to use numerous methods to stay in touch with our, with our residents. Um, in addition to the social media platforms that are out there, we use our, our city website, and everyone can sign up for electronic no notifications that are actually specific to what you want to hear about. So you can sign up for press releases, construction projects. Uh, you might want to sign up for what's happening on all those road projects. That would be a good one to be uh, tied into. And you can also register for the council and the business e-monthly newsletters. And I have a quarterly e-newsletter. And so we really hope that you'll stay connected with us. Certainly, if you see something that's very timely, we hope that our 24-7 Citizen Response Center is going to be able to handle your question or your, uh, report your incident and get it handled in a timely, timely, timely manner. So uh, time really does fly when you're having fun. 
And it's hard to believe that this September marks 15 years since the vote to become a city. Of course, we need to celebrate with, a pancake, with pancakes in honor of our founding fathers meeting at the Pancake House where this idea to launch a city was formed. We're having a pancake breakfast on September 12th, which is the actual day that the vote took place. And we'll be down at the Center Park, so we hope everyone will come out and join us. It's going to be great to be able to have our tradition. We typically do this every 5, 10, 15 years. And um, in past years, we've had some mishaps during that pancake flipping contest. But I promise you, this year, we have professionals coming out. So Mayor Pai, you're safe. No one's going to make you uh, catch a pancake this year. Also on September 12th, we hope you'll stay for the rest of the day because the Colorado Chili and Salsa Festival is coming to our park. So you can have green chili, all the varieties of salsa that you can enjoy, and have breakfast, lunch, and dinner at our park. And we also have something very exciting that's going to be happening at the park this year for the first time. The very next weekend, we're going to have <clears throat> an event, the Centennial Chalk Art Festival. Some of you may be familiar with the Larimer Arts Chalk Art Festival that happens downtown every year. Don't worry, that event is still going to be happening downtown, but they've had so much interest that we're going to have a second chalk art festival here in the city of Centennial. Now, some of you know that our experience with events and weather is a little challenging, so we are extremely excited to announce that the chalk they use is actually rain resistant. So we're safe, the event will go on rain or shine, and we're looking forward to having you all come out and help us um, enjoy that amazing art. And of course, we'll have our annual movie nights, our live concerts, everything that we've had in the past, in addition, farmers markets, German Fest, and a number of 5K races. You can view the complete list by going to the city website at centennialco.gov, and, and hope we'll see you a lot this summer. It sounds like another great year of performances, but we also want to talk about what's going to happen in 2015, and it's shaping up to be the year of innovation. We are very excited to be one of 14 worldwide cities awarded a Bloomberg Foundation Innovation Grant. This three-year grant is designed to help spread innovation in the public sector, something Centennial wholeheartedly endorses. At our first innovation conference earlier this year, we were very pleased to see what is considered innovation in a number of communities is standard practice here in Centennial. We are currently putting together our I-Team, which is our own think tank. <clears throat> and the Centennial I-Team will initially focus on improving mobility and transportation across all modes and then move on to many, many, many other ideas. So they are a three-year fluid think tank to come up with innovation. Centennial is the smallest city by population. And when you hear who else received the grant, I think you'll be pretty amazed that Centennial did so well. We joined the likes of, um, how about Seattle, Washington, Boston, LA, Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, and yes, city of Centennial. So we are in great company and excited to have you follow us along and see all the innovation that's going to come out of this grant. Very, very honored. And as we all know, in today's business environment, access to telecommunication services and ultra-fast broadband is a key priority when deciding where businesses are going to locate. Technology is continuously evolving, and it's at a very rapid pace, and it's important for the city of Centennial to be at the forefront of these technological improvements. So we have the ability to compete in a global market. Governing Magazine last year announced that the city of Centennial is the most internet-connected city over 100,000. 96% of our households have internet access. Nationwide, that's about 76%, so we are well above the norm. Therefore, we continue to investigate opportunities for the city to utilize its existing fiber optic infrastructure. Last year, we hired our consultant to assist us in exploring these opportunities, starting with the physical inventory of our fiber and conduit, then implementing a public outreach process to establish the current levels of service and identify realistic future needs. The city also became one of the inaugural partners to participate in a national broadband initiative called Next Century Cities. We were working with the participating cities to share ideas and lessons learned when it comes to leveraging our existing fiber infrastructure to attract new businesses and create jobs. Combining this groundwork with our innovation emphasis makes for exciting possibilities in 2015. So <clears throat> while I'm privileged to be the messenger of all this good news in our city each year, it takes leadership to blend vision with implementation. 
In Centennial, we have a great team of council, staff, and contractors who make Centennial shine. Two members of that team are wrapping up their own great performances on city council. Council members Vori Moon from District 1 and Keith Gardner from District 2 have served on council for half of Centennial's existence and are term limited this year. Vori, he's our senior statesman who helped build Centennial's foundation and continued to lead us forward while sharing his wisdom with just the right adage at city council meetings. Keith has been a dedicated, hands-on council member. His constituents know they can count on for help and we on council admire for his thorough, inquisitive attention to each issue and some dais amusement. We'd like to hear their thoughts about serving. I think there are two. Uh, we rebuilt South Glen, streets of South Glen, and we built the city park. I think those are two crowning jewels for the city. Proudest achievement would definitely have to be the park. That's, um, I'm fortunate that I, I work next to the city building, and when I have a down day, and they do happen, I will, uh, I'll come over to the park and just kind of walk around and see what we were able to do as a city, as a, as a city council, to come together with staff to create this magical place where there's so many kids that are running around happy and smiling. Um, that by far, it's kind of a legacy thing, right? You made something that makes other people happy for years and years to come. That by far is the number one one thing we've done. Let's see, my fondest memory from serving on city council um, came after we completed the park, the city park, and uh, one of my grandkids was there, and his comment to me was, this is the goodest park ever, Grandpa. That was the seal of the deal. Okay, we, we had an expert opinion. That's right. Well, the people that you get to meet in the community is by far the biggest piece, right? Because there's a lot of folks that don't believe in government, but when you have a chance to talk with them, help them out with something, and that light turns on where they're like, wow, they, he really cared. That's always been kind of my big driver for this. And just the, sens the, sensation, the sensation that I get when I help people, it just makes me feel good. But then to give people some confidence that we do know what we're doing, we care, and you know our staff is the interactions getting to know everyone staff their families um things that are going on in their lives that's been very rewarding as well so it's just a, a whole myriad of things that's made this fantastic and i will definitely miss this words of advice for future council members um first thing is listen to the citizens They seem to have a knack for knowing what they want. And we, with the citizen involvement in forming Centennial, I mean, you've got a, pub, a, a, a public that is willing to work and have a city. So you know you have a public that's willing to work and keep a city. Listen to them. Try to be true to yourself. If you want to make a joke, make a joke, as long as it's clean. But then at the same time, um, just communicate with your fellow council members about what you want to do and be open, honest, forthright about things. Let's work together. Keep in mind it's the people that we represent. That's the number one thing, not the individual sitting in those council member chairs. What are my hopes for the city of Centennial? I think I'd like to see the city stay pretty much on the same path toward innovation and growing um, if I were to dream I'd really like to see something like uh, another IKEA come in but uh, I know that you know something along that that path and we have room for it we have places for it that it would fit in really nicely and it would help this city tremendously and then when we get our fiber in and get it working we can go a long long way toward doing everything we think we want to do. We've got a lot of opportunities, so trying to find ways that we can maximize where we build certain things and continue to make this a destination location for work and shopping and fun activities. I think the city is in a good position. It, there's ways that can be everything that we want to do 
can be done. As long as we remember we are a city. We're not the, we're not the, the rural area that we started out being. We're a city. Well, if I could say anything, it would be thank you. Um, I know when I was thinking about running for this office so long ago, um, I thought there's no way this community was going to give a guy like me, young, unproven, well tanned, um, an opportunity to serve his community. And they, they, they did. They did, and I'm just so grateful that they let me do it. I've learned so much about myself. I've enjoyed it. I think I've made a difference. Um, I think I've helped a lot of people build relationships with communities that we were having kind of a tough time with before. Um, but I just can't thank them enough for giving me a shot at this. In one word, describing Centennial, awesome. Downright awesome. How would I describe Centennial? <laughs> Extraordinary, magnificent, home. It's uh, special. I think special would be the word I'd have to choose. As you can tell, Keith got the memo about lightening up and having some fun. But really, um, I'm going to miss working with these gentlemen so much. And um, I hope you all just, I wish they'd stand and let's all give them a round of applause. It's been a great eight years. So there's no way I could follow Keith with any more serious um, stuff today. So I, I just want to tell you how much I greatly appreciate your time and attention while I shared Centennial's news. I hope you also enjoyed the work of our Rotarians and even had a little fun. Because remember, that means you are seriously committed to mastery and high performance. And while 2014 was undoubtedly the year of great performances, 2015 is all about thinking outside the box, being innovative, and doing things differently and better. I look forward to working with each one of you this year. Thank you, have a great afternoon, and we appreciate your time. Thanks.